So I entered right here. Short. Yeah, I wish. Look at that. So this is what I'm looking at this morning. Not this, but everything looks the same. I'm not gonna mess with this. It's too far down. It may continue to plummet, but in, from what I'm seeing lately, look, it's right into here. Everything's right into resistance or support. I'm not, I don't short these when they're excessive down. Now it's not excessive down this morning, but the drop yesterday was just massive. I'm not gonna mess with it. 90% of the time they just fiddle around and just, they either pop up hard or they just stagnate and, and chop within a 50 cent dollar range. So basically everything dropped yesterday, flattened out, tried to pop up in the pre-market, and then it's dropping back down. The problem is 90% of them are dropping, here's where it's at right now, this white line, are dropping right into support. This is not too bad, but it's Intel. I'm not gonna short it. I think I'm gonna skip this one. Apple, same thing, drop, flattened out. They're all exactly the same. Tried to come up and failed again. I hate when they bleed off pre-market. You gotta sit there and watch them. Um, but look at the daily. I'm not messing with that. It's very likely to pop down at least to this 116. There's plenty of trade room there. I'll have it on my charts. If it starts flowing good, I might, but I really don't wanna mess with it, because look, now that's not horrific, but like I said, it could easily pop down $4, which is plenty for me. I'm at a dollar, would be great. So it doesn't matter that much, but I'm just trying to increase my odds. CCL, same thing. Um, I'm gonna put it on here because it's a smaller mover and it's only got two little points to pierce. It's when they have a whole bunch of consolidation. I'll show you one in a minute that makes it harder. So it's at 25, it could easily pop down to 23. And it's got a little bit of news. They just put in a cruise line ban or something uh, through November and it's March right now. Okay, here's the ones I don't like. So it did the same thing as everything else. It dropped off yesterday, flattened out, tried to pop up and it's dropping off again. The problem is this, you see all this right here? The flatter that is and the more narrow that is, the harder it is for it to get through. Now, it may just go right through it like it doesn't even exist, but like I said, I'm trying to increase my odds. That white line is where it's at right now. You can see, it already popped down to the middle of that once and came right back up. So, it's very likely to just chop in that zone there and not get a run down to here. So, to increase my odds, I'm gonna skip that one. This is AAL, here's where it's at now. It's not bad, but it's a small mover. 23.40, fucking maybe a dollar down to here. So you see, it doesn't have a lot. It's just got a few points sticking up here. What I'm looking for is room from where it's at now to drop. Okay, check this one out. Same thing, came down, popped up. You know, unless it keeps bleeding off in pre-market another couple dollars, I'll have to forget it, but look at the daily. It's down here. It's not ideal again, but look, it's got two dollars to get down to here and it's got nothing really it, it doesn't have a lot of consolidation it can flow right through this stuff so it's made it past most of the consolidation already which is from here up from this 23 area up so if it starts flowing down here it may well go it could ping back off and come up but the chances are it'll just keep flowing if the market's flowing so i got neo too this looks like a good one came down. You can also get somewhat of an indication on how far they popped up. You know, if they popped way back up into here and then come back and they're right here, it's probably going to bounce and go long. I mean, and everything may do that. I may, I may go long because everything's been down and then when the market opens, they just run and fill the gap and I'm waiting for them to fail, like halfway to the gap or fill the gap and fail. They don't ever fail. They run all the way back, fill the gap and either chop for a while and then blow out the top or just chop the rest of the day. But look at Neo, okay, so same thing here. It's bleeding off more than I'd like. I'd like to see it pull back at least at 36. But look at the daily. So here's where it's at right now. Yeah, it's way extended down here and it's at where it already bounced once, but it's got, hell, $3 to get down to here and another $3, two or $3 to get down to here. And it's not a lot of consolidation. 
So you can go right through these easy. So that's what I'm looking for compared to something like this. I find that it, it somewhat helps increases, increase my odds from getting bounced when I go short or long. You know, and I'm not going to take a long right in the middle of a bunch of consolidation on the daily. It doesn't matter too much because I'm trading in, you know, I'm looking for 20 cents minimum, but hopefully 50 cents a dollar occasionally on the big days when they bleed off a couple dollars. But um, so the daily, it doesn't matter a lot, but it's just a way to help increase your odds overall of getting the bigger runs. Now, when you get into the bigger stocks, like, or you're, or you're trading, uh, yeah, yeah you're like Tesla and stuff like that, Microsoft, which I got Microsoft's one of the ones that's not dropping today. If anything's going to run up, that'll probably be it. But, um, you know, like TradeNet does and stuff, those stocks, it maybe, you know, where you're taking two and three dollar stops and waiting for the bigger runs, you know, um, the daily plays in a little bit more than what I'm doing. Or a lot more actually because they're looking for five and ten dollar runs on a lot of these stocks